Here goes nothing. Oh, baby. What we have quite literally traveled across the entire world for is about to begin. So windy. Say hello to our van. <laughs> Well guys, welcome to episode one of Japan in a Van. God, what did I get myself into? We gotta do a van tour, but I can't, I can't stay here. Ikemasho, Ohio. Good morning. Welcome to the official Japan in a Van episode number one. In case you guys are not up to date on what in the hell is going on, God, I am traveling half of the country of Japan in a van. We're gonna be backpacking and camping out in this van all the way from Hokkaido down to Tokyo. If you guys missed the first two videos of me just getting to Japan, go watch those. But welcome to the official episode number one. So currently right now, we are leaving my hotel in Hakodate, which is the bottom of Hokkaido, and making our way up to a spot that I found called Lake Toya. Basically throughout this trip, I'm gonna go find a bunch of really scenic and awesome locations just to, just to experience cool and, and new things. This is something so different for me and I'm gonna take you guys along every step of the way. Do I have any idea what I'm doing? Hell no. Am I scared? Hell yes, but that's the, the purpose of this trip. The trip is to be put in uncomfortable situations and just learn from them and experience new and crazy things. So hope you guys are excited. This is the start. I have no freaking clue what to expect. So let's just have some fun. Okay, well, I found this little pull off and I figured no time better than now. Introducing to you my new Toyota Hiace. I have to give a big thank you to Top Rank for letting me use this thing for my journey. For the next seven, eight or so days, we're gonna be living out of this Hiace. This is a special edition Hiace called a Toy Factory, which is basically a van conversion. So if you look back here, we can actually set up these pads right here to create a bed and I'm basically gonna be sleeping on this bed here living out of this van but it's so freaking cool because it's literally got everything we need if I want to sit back here edit or eat or anything I have that if you look back here I'm not even sure what any of what is this this is a this is a fridge we have a fridge in here what we also have plugs right here what is this Can you turn this on now, for today, we're actually not staying in the van. We're heading to a spot called Lake Toya to go see a volcanic lake, which is supposed to be one of those beautiful spots in Hokkaido. And then to end our day, we're actually heading to one of Japan's most famous onsen spots called Noboribetsu. Stay in a very, very traditional Japanese ryokan, which you guys don't know is like a Japanese style in tatami floors, natural hot spring onsen. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And this is basically what I wanted to do for you guys along this trip is show you every little bit and piece of what I can of Japanese culture, scenery, just joy the actual country of Japan. So today's the start and I hope you guys are ready. Let's find our way to Lake Toya somehow. Once again, I want to give a massive thank you to my friends over at Top Rank. I'm going to leave a link to them down in the description box below in case you guys want a JDM car or, in this case, a van. All right, guys, our first adventure of the entire trip starts with Lake Toya. We have a two and a half hour journey, 139 kilometers. Let's do this thing.
The journey to Lake Toyo was long, but so rewarding. We traveled the coastline up to the city of Toyoko, where Lake Toyo lies. On the drive, I got to see so many small fishing towns and different coastlines. It was absolutely beautiful getting to drive the coast with massive cliffs towering over me and in front of me. Oh yeah! The higher we got up the mountain, the more beautiful it continued to get. You had the beach on one side and snowy mountains on the other. We are f oh my god. It is <laughs> Wow. We are officially in the town of Toyoko, Japan which is home to Lake Toya, a lake completely formed by a volcano. We're heading to the observatory right now so we can check it out, but oh, it is absolutely mind blowing. It is huge. The views of Lake Toya are absolutely breathtaking. Lake Toya is a caldera lake that was formed by a depression caused by a massive volcanic eruption around 110,000 years ago. But also, fun fact, this lake served as inspiration for Lake Truth in the center region of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. For any of you Pokemon nerds watching like me. <laughs> But in all seriousness, our first Japan and Van location was, was a massive success. Lake Toya is definitely something I'll never forget. Uh, man, it's really times like these that makes me appreciate what in the hell I am doing. All right. It's actually pretty nice. There's uh, not a lot of people here, which was super cool. I noticed that they do have a little shop here. I wanna go check it out, see if they might have any food or, I don't know, if there's anything cool in here. You guys already know, we got pork curry, which is perfect on a cold and rainy day. And we have an insane view of the lake. all the shots we saw everything really beautiful only thing could have been a little bit better is if we had clear sunny skies but I'm not gonna complain Lake Toya did not disappoint that was a beautiful okay on to our next location which I don't I don't know what that is yet let's, let's, let's figure it out oh my god it is freezing I didn't know if we were gonna have time or not, but it does look like we got a little bit of time. I think we should head into the town and actually go see a little local waterfall. I think that would be pretty awesome if we can get to it. I've been doing some research while I had the downtime traveling and I think I found some pretty cool things to do. So before we actually head to the onsen town of Nobori Betsu, let's go see a waterfall and head into town. Actually, quick stop. So this is a place called Lake Hill Farm and supposedly this has some of the best ice cream in all of Japan. And of course, we're gonna freaking try it. Well, uh, change of plans here. Wouldn't be a classic road trip in the middle of nowhere in a different country all alone if you didn't have 
a massive piece of metal in your tire, literally airing it out. What in the, what am I gonna do? Oh no, it's so flat. It's so flat. This is the plan of attack here. I found that the, the van has a spare tire, but we do not have jack or a tire iron. So I'm gonna go to a gas station and hopefully see if a gas station can help me change the tire to the spare tire because, oh, dude, this thing is so flat. I really should not be driving on it. That's the only option I have. I think we're gonna make it to the gas station though before it explodes. On the plus side, this is absolutely beautiful, but I would also like to, to not be stranded. So I'll update you guys once we get to the gas station. Hopefully they can, hopefully they can hook me up. Oh yes, there's a shop. This is great. I have a flat tire. Can you help me change it? I have a spare tire, but no tools. Hi. Hi. I don't know what's happening, but I think it's good. He's gonna pull into the shop, thankfully. Well, this is uh, very unexpected. You know, I think my uh, my car lock follows me to Japan. Okay, this. Okay, this. Okay. God, this size, same as this size. I think we should be good. 15s? Yes, 15s. ありがとうございました。あ、いくらですか。通算だね。はい。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありが
a, a little bit of a waterfall, I guess. I don't know. Let's head back to the van and we are gonna go one of Japan's most beautiful onsen cities and stay in an incredible traditional Japanese rugged. Head north on. Head south toward Longjian Bay. Let's head to Naboribetsu. made it and this place is incredible with a ton of history which um, I think we have a little bit of daylight left which is good I can show you guys around the town and kind of give you the history a little bit of Nobori Betsu because it's actually pretty interesting I nerd out I nerd out on this kind of stuff it's a very special onsen town with a very unique story so we're gonna go walk around check it out a little bit I had to park the big ass camper van in the day parking because it didn't fit in the onsen parking but that's okay it's just a just a short walk right there. And we're staying in the middle of everything, which is absolutely sick. So lock her up and go check it out. Thank you, thank you. This place is nuts. Oh my God, this is amazing. This is so sick. Come on. We got the most traditional JDM room as possible. Check this out. Oh. oh my God. This is amazing. You can probably tell I don't have bedding just yet, but that's because you actually come and prepare your traditional Japanese bedding. So we're gonna be sleeping on the tatami floors, you guys. If you guys are fans of all the Japan videos, you guys know that I absolutely love sleeping on the tatami floors. And that's what we're doing tonight with actual real bedding. This place is incredible. So before we actually settle in and start putting all of our stuff out, do we have robes? That's a question. We're gonna actually head down, go check out the town a little bit and give you guys a little history lesson on the Bori Betsu because it's freaking sick. All right, so no Bori Betsu. I especially wanted to come here because, because of its crazy history. The story goes that thousands and thousands of years ago, there were nine different deities that somewhat resembled a demon-like figure that came to Naboribetsu and put their clubs in the ground and created the different hot springs here. So if you can see, I'm standing in the middle of this plaza here and you can see nine separate clubs representing a different deity here. And the cool thing is, they all represent a different form of healing. So you can go to all the different onsens or different hot baths, experience the different healing properties that each bath gives you. So freaking cool. I mean, look at this. The fact that they have this just in the middle of the city, showing a little bit of the town's history is just absolutely insane. It tells you a little bit right here. Let's see what this says. Let's see, praise the heart of mercy, a white metal rod left by Yukjin has the effect of harmonious family. Whoa, so that's the white one. What's the red one? Full of youthful vanity. A red iron rod by Yokujin, effective for prosperity of descendants. Whoa. Yellow, be beautiful and passionate. A yellow metal rod left by Yokujin, effective in achieving good, good matches. The black insatiable ambition. The purple iron. Hmm. Then we have the green. Sniff out an opportunity. Great food left by you left by Yugami with rising financial fortune. Ooh, okay. Let's do blue. A blue rod left behind. Boasts a robust body. Oh, if you want to get jacked, go to the blue one. A brown iron rod left by Yukujin, who possesses a keen mind, effective for academic achievement. Let's see, black, have an unshakable faith. A black rod left behind by a demon, by a demon god, effective, what does that say? Effective in 
prospering business. Wow, okay, last one. Courageous, delicate, and all-seeing, the golden metal rod left behind by the demon god has the effect of fulfilling a great wish. Whoa. So there you have it. That's what all of them do. Okay, last but not least, we're heading there. Place called Hell Valley. Jigokudani, or Hell's Valley, is an active volcano's geothermal area at work. This area is actually the source of the hot springs water, you can see as they flow up from the surface and become infused with minerals. This area actually supplies more than 10,000 tons of water that contain natural elements for the hotels and inns in Boribetsu. Man, this has gotta be one of the wildest things I have ever seen in my whole life. Oh. I am just so speechless. I'm the only one here. You can smell the sulfur in the air from the, from the actual minerals in the water. I don't know what I was expecting from this trip, and granted, this is still day one, but I feel like I couldn't have expected any of this. Today was just insane. Today alone has taught me so much, I mean, so much about everything. About myself, about overcoming unexpected obstacles, and just figuring things out on my own. I, d I don't know. I've never been in a situation like this where I'm traveling alone and figuring things out on my own. It's whether you guys are enjoying this or whether you think I'm crazy and this is crazy because to be honest, I think it is too. Thank you guys so much for allowing this to be my life because none of this would be possible without you guys. Hopefully a lot of you have been with me from the very start from, from nothing and uh, to being in Hokkaido in the middle of Hell Valley by myself. <laughs> We've come a long way. I can honestly, with a full heart, say day one of Japan in a van was an absolute success. Let's go find some dinner and go get in the onsen. Oh, it's so steamy. Something a little bit different than eating at the onsen buffet. Uh, small local is kind of we're gonna try and find something to eat this is like as local as local can get so Sapporo Sapporo yeah hey. okay. chicken Chibon. yeah okay hi hey. oh, thank you I have a good night hey. Hey. I have a good night hi I mean we're close enough to Sapporo how far away from Sapporo is actually up to Sapporo right there we're pretty close anyway come by uh, oh, this looks so good. This looks insane. you guys they set up your bed for you this is our room for the night the ultimate way to spend your night in Japan if there's one thing that I could recommend when you come visit Japan is to go find a natural hot spring onsen and straight stay in a traditional Japanese ryokan so unfortunately I can't take you guys along with me to the to the onsen because 
just a bunch of naked dudes. So, you guys can't enjoy natural onsen. I can. So let's grab this. We gotta put on our robes. This is my favorite part, to be honest. We are ready for natural hot spring onsen. Now, I'm not sure which club deity thing this one is, but I'm gonna go try and relax, get some healing properties all over my body because tomorrow's gonna be a very long day. So, and like I said, unfortunately, unfortunately I can't take you guys because it is just a bunch of naked dudes. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and also get naked with a bunch of naked dudes and go relax and I'll update you guys when we get back and we're editing and getting ready for bed and stuff. So let's go try this one out. Well, guys, <sighs> you'd be surprised at how comfortable this is. It's actually kind of ridiculous. <laughs> that is going to do it for me. It is, this is the latest I've stayed up on this trip. It's almost 1230 and I am going to knock out. We have another big day tomorrow with a two or three hour drive to Sapporo. And uh, tomorrow is our first time camping in the van, so... That's going to be really interesting. Got to get ready for that. Oh, it's going to be fine. All right, guys. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all the videos and you can follow along with Japan and Nirvana. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. And if you have, make sure to leave me a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Um, once again, thank you for watching. I just really hope you guys enjoy this because it's a lot of fun. Um, I'll see all of you guys for episode two of Japan in a Van.